In this video, we'll walk through a spreadsheet that you can download that'll help you analyze a convertible note or a pre-money safe to see what the impact of that instrument will be on your share dilution. We'll walk through two additional spreadsheets in subsequent videos. The next one will walk through the post-money safe to analyze how it can have an effect on your share dilution. And then finally, we'll walk through what I think of as the ultimate share dilution spreadsheet, which will look at multiple convertible notes, multiple pre-money safes, and multiple post-money safes, so you can analyze a broad range of situations to see how they will affect your share dilution. I'm Steve Morris, and I use this Startup SOS channel to provide practical how-to advice for first-time entrepreneurs. So again, the topic this time, analyzing the pre-money, safe, and or convertible note to see how it will impact your share dilution. Let's jump right into that. The scenario is you've closed a note or a safe for some current funding, and later then you have a Series A funding that converts uh, that convertible security into stock. We'll walk through two different situations. On the one hand, the Series A investors requires that you issue some additional stock options prior to the Series A investment. Once those are issued, then they make the investment against that larger base of fully diluted uh, shares. And then the convertible security converts and it dilutes both the Series A and the founders. That's a reasonably balanced approach and a very typical approach for an early stage investment. But option number two is the fixed percent approach. Here, the investor decides they don't wanna be diluted by all of those convertible securities that you have. So they're gonna require that the option pool and the Series A ownership at the end of the round, after everything converts, is some fixed percentage, a percentage for the option pool and a percentage for the Series A. So the Series A is not getting diluted by the convertible security. Instead, it's the founders that are getting diluted. One other note on the spreadsheet, you'll see that some of the cells have green text, others have black text. The green text is where you plug in your numbers. The black text is either you know, titles or descriptions or the results of actual formulas. You won't want to change the formulas unless you really understand the spreadsheet and understand what you're doing. Here's the first part of the spreadsheet where you get to plug in uh, how much stock initially do the founders have. Here we're starting with a million shares. And we assume you've closed either a note or a pre-money safe for some funding, uh, plugged in $500,000. And I'm assuming this is a note. So it has an interest rate of 8%. And it has a period that you expect uh, it will go until it converts in that Series A round. We need to put that in because that becomes you know, part of the funding that will convert. Now, in this case, we're assuming the conversion happens in 12 months, it's 8%, so that'll add $40,000 to that $500,000 note. And we're assuming a pre-money cap of 4 million and a discount of 30%. Again, all of these green numbers, you can plug in whatever other numbers you want. If you wanna plug in for a safe, just make the interest rate zero and the calculations work exactly the same for a pre-money safe as for a convertible note. Next, we assume there's a Series A investment. Series A investor gives you a pre-money valuation of $8 million and invests 2 million. And they're gonna require that upfront you issue an additional 10% of the company's shares uh, to build up your option pool. Now, without any convertible securities converting, this implies that the Series A investors would own 20% of the company, right? They're investing 2 million, the post money would be 8 million plus that 2 million or 10 million, and 2 million is 20% of uh, 10 million, so their ownership would be 20%, again, assuming there aren't any other securities converting. So let's look at scenario one where they're requiring you to allocate options before they invest. In this scenario, you've got a million shares sitting there owned by the founders. So you'll need to issue an additional 111,111 ,111 shares to get a total of just over 1.1 million because that's how many shares it takes such that 10% uh, of the full capitalization, fully diluted shares the company give you that stock option number. Okay, so that's how that math works. Now that we've figured out how many options or how much stock we have to allocate to options, next we figure out what is the share price that the Series A investors will pay. Well, simple enough to calculate, it's the 
pre-money value divided by that fully diluted capitalization. Pre-money is $8 million. The fully diluted uh, capitalization is just over $1.1 million. Do that division, and the price per share comes out to $7.20. Next, we'll figure out what the convertible security holder, either the note or the safe, will pay for their shares. To do that, we'll calculate what is the price that the cap would dictate? What's the price that the discount would dictate? Uh, what's the price that the Series A investors will pay? And just take the minimum of, uh, of those three numbers. That's what the convertible security holder will pay. In this case, the best deal comes from the cap because it's a very low cap compared to the pre-money value. So that's going to determine the price that is paid by the convertible security holder. Now that we have the prices, we can figure out the cap table. So we begin with a million shares uh, that the founders have, and then we calculate that the convertible security will get 150,000 shares. Just the amount they invested, 500,000 plus the 40,000 in interest in this example, divided by the price that we calculated for the convertible share holders. Next, we have already calculated the number of options we needed, 111,111. And then finally, we calculate the number of shares that go to the Series A investors, which is simply the amount that they're investing, $2 million, divided by the share price they pay, which is $7.20. So that then gives us a total number of shares of just over 1.5 million. You can see that the founders have been diluted some fair amount. Now, they started out with 100% of the company. Now they have 65%. The convertible security holders have 9.7%. The option pool got diluted by the convertible securities converting. It's not 10% anymore. It's 7.2%. And the Series A investors got diluted also. They don't have 20%. They have 18.1%. So again, that's a very common approach to doing a Series A and converting the uh, convertible securities where the dilution after the options are issued, the dilution of the convertible securities is shared by the founders and the Series A investors. But that's, of course, not the only approach. Let's look at scenario number two, where we're going to fix the percent of both the option pool and the Series A investment post-investment. So how do we figure that out? Well, we know that the founders have a million shares. Now, let's assume the same stock price for this round as in the earlier simpler case, $7.20. Well, in that case, the convertible security holder, either the convertible note or the safe holder, will pay that low price determined by the cap and, and get the same number of shares as in the previous example, 150,000. The Series A then is going to come out with 20% and the stock options are going to come out with 10% after all of those uh, shares are issued for the, the note holder or the safe holder. So how do we figure out how many additional shares have to be issued? Well, we have a total of 1.15 million shares, the, the 1 million plus 150,000 for the convertible security. And we want that to be equal to 70% of the total number of shares so that we have room for 10% you know, for the options, 20% for the, the Series A investors. How do you figure out how many shares that will take? If you simply divide 0.7 into 1.15 million. And that gives us just over 1.6 million shares that we need. Now we can build the cap table. So again, the founders have a million shares. We've calculated with an assumed Series A price of $7.20, which means that the convertible securities have a price lower than that. We've assumed that and calculated their share count. We have a required option pool that's 10% of the total, 1.64 million, 10% of that, about 164,000. And the Series A investors will get shares determined by their investment divided by the stock price, again, $7.2. 277.7 thousand uh, shares. But now we have a problem. That adds up to about 1.5 million shares. That's not the number we calculated before. That was over 1.6 million. The other problem is the Series A investors don't own 20% at the end of the round. They own 16.91%. Okay, so what went wrong? Well, what went wrong is we chose the wrong stock price. We started with 
a reasonable enough guess, $7.20, the same price as was paid in the first scenario. But clearly, in order to give the Series A investors 20% of the company, that price is too high. The price needs to be lower than that in order to get more uh, stock to those Series A investors so their money will go farther to get them up to 20%. Well, how do we calculate what that exact price is to get them the right number of shares? And that is the tricky part. And here's why. Let's start with the share price. That determines how many convertible shares, whether it's convertible note or safes, there are. It also determines the number of Series A shares and that added up gives you the total capitalization along with the uh, pre-existing shares for the founders. That total capitalization then determines the share ownership and the share ownership depends on the share price. Well, that's a problem. Now we've, we're circular. We've mapped right back up to the share price. You need the share price to figure out the total capitalization. You need the total capitalization to figure out the share price. So in other words, this is an iterative calculation. Now, some spreadsheets like Excel can do iterative calculations if you set that mode in the spreadsheet. But that can be a little bit of a challenge. Sometimes those iterations can like go on forever, so it's uh, a little tricky. Also, the spreadsheet I usually use is numbers on uh, a Mac, and it doesn't do that kind of iteration. So the approach I took in this spreadsheet, so it'll work on any spreadsheet, and so it won't get into an endless loop, is to let the user do the iteration. So you get to iterate the price. So let's walk through how that works. So looking at the spreadsheet, there's this part that's labeled the iterative share price, and it's green, meaning you get to set that. Now, we set that initially to $7.20. You can see now that target ownership for the Series A is 20%, and the calculated ownership with that share price is 16.91%. So clearly that price is too low. To make this spreadsheet work, what you get to do is to crank down that price, try at lower prices, until you get to the right price that sets that percent to 20%. Well, we know it has to be a lower price because we know that the Series A shareholders need more shares. So their $2 million investment needs to pay a lower price so they get more shares. So we're going to ratchet the price down to something below $7.20. After a little experimentation, you'll find that $6.086 is the right number. Out to at least four digits, that gets you the 20% that the Series A investors are insisting that they have. So now that we have the right price, let's plug that into our cap table. So now we have 1 million shares for the founders, as before. The convertibles are still at 150,000 shares because their pre-money cap is still a better deal for them than, say, the discounted price of even this new lower uh, Series A price. So they're still at 150,000. The required option pool is yeah, 10% of that earlier number that we calculated for the total uh, fully diluted number of shares. And the Series A investors now get 328.6 thousand shares. And again, that's their 2 million divided by that new lower share price that we just calculated. Now the percentages turn out right. Uh, things do add up to the total number of shares we calculated before. The Series A investors do have 20% of the company. The option pool has 10%. And you can see that the founders now have been diluted down to 60.9% of the company. So let's see how that compares to our first scenario, the prior simpler approach. With this second calculation, we had 60.9% ownership by the founders. And that compares to 65% ownership in the earlier example. That's 4.1% difference in dilution. That's an important difference uh, to founders. And it's not just the founders, of course, that are affected. In this particular scenario, the convertible security holder, either the convertible note or safe, had 9.1% in this new calculation before they ended up with 9.7%. So they too are ending up with 
less of the company. The reason for that is that it's their pre-money cap that's driving their price. If the discount had been driving the price, then their price between these two scenarios would have come down in this, this uh, newer example, and their ownership actually would have increased in this new scenario. So you never know until you run the numbers whether it's going to be good for the convertible security holder or not so good for them. But this, uh, this scenario of fixing both the options percent and the stock percent for the Series A investors pretty much always going to be a bad thing for, uh, for the founders because they're going to absorb at least the majority of the dilution. Quick summary, when it comes to dilution of Series A, different approaches to conversion of your convertible securities can have very different implications, specifically different implications for the founder dilution. The spreadsheet that we put together, which you can download, there's a link in the notes, will help you work through some different scenarios to understand the implications in more detail. And that's a wrap of our discussion of a spreadsheet to forecast your dilution. If this was helpful, please click the like and share it with other entrepreneurs. Leave a comment if you have any feedback or questions. And please do hit that subscribe button because the next video you want to hit the bell to get notified for describes these two scenarios but with the post money safe and how that works. Now we'll add that to the playlist of this whole series. There's a link to that right below me. So use that link to make sure you don't miss anything in this series. That's it for now. Thank you very much for watching.